Are you nuts? A lolly game? Did you not see what happened to Alisoff? Topical. But honestly, this game isn't that crazy, so I'm not worried about that front. Oh, great. Then I'll leave you to it. Might as well try out the game for myself. What I'm actually more worried about is the gore. Oh my god, what is he doing to her arm? This actually might be the first time a video gets demonetized for something other than sexual content. What's up guys, and today I've got something different from our standard fare of fan service. I've got a Riona title here. And for those who don't know what a Riona title is, it's, well, um... Fatality. Anyways, Under Party. I don't know why I keep wanting to call this game Panty Party. That is an entirely different genre. Underparty is an interesting title I got for the lulls, and for the first couple of minutes, I wasn't feeling it at all. But after a while, I got my bearings, started engaging more with the mechanics, and started to get some real enjoyment from the title. And then it ended. Yeah, this game is pretty damn short, and that's the main reason this turned into a review instead of a spotlight. So let's jump right in. What's the story? Well, you play as a detective going undercover, hence the bunny girl outfit, looking for a kidnapped girl. That's about it. This game isn't really focusing on the storytelling. Clearly. So this is probably going to be a quick review, but as far as gameplay goes, I kinda went in expecting a low effort flash game, but while it indeed looked the part, it did try to pull off the action platformer gameplay described on the Steam page. Starting off with the melee combat, it's pretty basic, a 3 hit combo with a launcher at the end, and a simple air combo for airborne enemies. But for the graphics presented? These are pretty cool to look at, she even does a cool slam attack on the final hit. As you go through the game, you learn new abilities that add a bit of creativity to the combat, like a one button launch, a dash attack, and an aerial relaunch among other things. The thing that holds this back from being really fun though, is the lack of hit stop. Could just be me sucking at video games, but doing anything fancy in the air aside from basic air combos was a pain, because there is so little time to input anything before gravity rips you back to the ground. On a brighter note, you can unlock Death Blossom. Die, die, die. The best part of the melee though is the parry, really showing how just one mechanic can really spice up a basic game. You can parry just about any attack enemies throw at you, and doing so in melee range gets you a Dark Souls style counterattack for massive damage. This is what saves the game in many ways. A lot of the situations the game puts you in are annoying as hell but a parry that refreshes on a successful block means nothing is impossible. The melee combat is honestly better than I expected. The gunplay on the other hand... Well, it's gunplay. The ranged combat is one of the game's weaker areas. You get a basic pistol with infinite ammo, and later on you get other weapons you can toggle between that require ammo to be purchased from one of the angel looking motherfuckers. I don't know what that's about. Problem is, enemies close the distance so fast, or come in such numbers, or are outright more dangerous at a range with stun locking projectiles, that outside of a handful of situations, I kept the gunplay to a minimum. Though I guess that's intentional since this is supposed to be a hard game. Meh. But speaking of stun locking, I guess it's time to talk about the bleeding beat up lolly elephant in the room. Dude. Since this is a Riona title, there is a lot of focus on putting the main character in unfortunate situations, which translates in this game to the game being unfair as fuck. There are a bunch of insta-kill traps early on that can only be reliably dodged after learning of their existence in the most inconvenient of ways. Enemies have stupid fast grab attacks that deal absurd amount of damage, and this game gives the player the rare experience of what it feels like to be the jugglee rather than the juggler. But with that said, Sometimes the game's over-the-top physics can look pretty funny. <laughs> this 
This game also has CGs, almost forgot, but since this is a small title, they are rather limited, so if Riona content is your thing, you might be disappointed in that. They're not too extreme, I guess, due to the cutesy anime art style, or at least the ones I unlocked weren't. Call my therapist. Tell him he's a rich man. Not a huge fan of the unlock method either. Like, lose to unlock CG is okay in some games. But lose X amount of time to get CG? That's a bit weird. The challenge mode CGs are a lot more sensible for a video game with beat X boss to unlock CG. Oh, this game has post content by the way. Congratulations! Back to the difficulty, since this is a Riona title, there is a lot of focus on putting the main character in unfortunate situations which translates in this game to the game being challenging as fuck. Beating up enemies trying to hunt you down is fun, and there is so much to keep track of that it becomes really cool to successfully navigate through the BS. That's part of the reason that parrying was such a good feature to include. Parry the projectiles, wail on the regular mobs with your sword, and avoid any elite enemies with stagger protection. And I guess maybe shoot a flying enemy or two. The game feels like the devs wanted to make something more than just a vehicle for Riona content, and that's best shown with a secret in one of the stages, where you get to use your air melee attack to jump a wide gap, leapfrogging over tentacles hidden in vents to access a hidden area. I was not able to do this, but it was in this moment that a secret to the universe was revealed to me. Is it possible that Riona games in general are more likely to have compelling gameplay compared to arrogant titles due to the combative nature of the fetish? I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking that. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. But it was this moment that really inspired me to make sure I did this video, because sure it's small, and a little bit rough around the button mashy combo edges, but I liked the effort the game presented. And the effort really showed up in the later parts of the game where this title did something I almost never see from any game. An escort mission that doesn't feel like a complete chore. Halfway through the game, you reach the location of the kidnapped girl, and to my surprise, she wasn't hacked to pieces long before you got to her. Instead, the game after that point focuses on you, the player, escorting her out of the facility, and as horrible as that may sound, the devs designed this in the most gamer-friendly way I've ever seen, despite how unfair the game is supposed to be. Sure, she takes damage like a bitch, but if you hit the parry button, she pulls out a fucking riot shield and becomes fully invincible temporarily. Hold down the crouch button, and not only does she immediately drop to the ground, but she stays like that for a bit past when you get up to stay clear of most projectiles. She even pulls out her own tiny gun to shoot enemies while you're fighting. But the best part, the secret sauce to escort missions, the thing that blew my mind. At any point in time, you can just pick her ass up and go. No movement speed penalty or nothing. And when shit goes down, you just drop her like a sack of potatoes and instantly be back on the offensive. Never in my life have I needed something so much and never known until I received it. I don't care if there's a fetish angle to picking up a girl and throwing her over your shoulders. If a game has an escort mission, it needs to do this. The only place where I really felt the pain of an escort mission was in the boss fights. So let's end with those because... They aren't that tough, well aside from this bitch, but they do require actual focus if you don't want to get BS'd out. I won't say they don't telegraph their attacks, but the amount of time you have to react is really strict, and failing to evade... And for such a small game, it has some creative boss ideas with the underground kidnapping operation theme. In terms of unique gameplay, not so much. But, to the game's credit, they do function as a sort of test of the player's skill. <laughs> eh, that's pretty much all I have to say here. Like I said, small game. So let's wrap this up. This game is too indie to have a proper credits roll. And also, wow, I didn't die nearly as much as I thought I did. For such a random title, I honestly went in with low expectations, but it was surprisingly fun. Now it's clearly lacking in a bunch of areas, even compared to other indie titles, like I'm pretty sure the music is just whatever the devs could find on short notice to fill in the silence. And the sprite art really isn't working for me, even ignoring the Riona elements. But jumping around, comboing fools worked pretty well. It lives up to the action platformer description. But even with all that, price-wise, 
I'm not sure I'm feeling it. Sure, seven bucks isn't a lot, but that's not too far away from other indies that either have more content or are visually more appealing. I just think the game needs more stuff. Like, I beat it in three hours. On a brighter note, during the time the game sat in my Steam library, it actually got updated, so more content does seem to be on the horizon. That and the challenge mode added after beating the game for the first time, eh, it might be worth it. But for now, I'd say with a price of $6.99, it's still a sale minus. Throw this in the cart with some other bigger games during the holidays or something, because as surprisingly competent as the game was compared to my initial assumptions, mm, it's still not there. But let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll see you guys next time. Matane.